What's up, Mortgage Coach community? I am super pumped about this conversation. It is part of the series that Kristen Messerly and I are calling Purpose and Profits. Uh, we, we passionately believe that all housing professionals, both mortgage and real estate agents, can really make a difference in America when it comes to financial literacy. Like, that is the purpose. And we do think that the best educators, the best professionals that create the most financial literacy in the, in the markets they serve will close more loans. What's up, Kristen? I'm excited. Like, is this the third time you and I have done this or fourth? I don't, oh, I don't know, but I am so excited about this. Uh, Jordan is doing something really cool. So we've, I, I know I've talked to Jordan on a couple of occasions about this, but, um, but yeah, this is going to be fun. So why don't, why don't we do this? Why don't you kind of share who Jordan Nutter is from your perspective, and then I'll do my introduction, and then we'll start asking her questions. And for anyone tuning into this, uh, you're going to get ideas that are going to help you bring more value to real estate agents. You're going to get ideas that help you go consumer direct better, like Jordan's kind of doing the ultimate consumer direct move, which we'll share with you in a minute. Um, so go ahead, Kristen, why don't you uh, introduce Jordan? Yeah, so Jordan is an, a loan officer, influencer. Uh, she's VP of the Influencer Division for NFM Lending, and she is an ambassador for First Home IQ. Um, so she is very passionate about education and really um, finding new and unique ways of educating the, the consumer. So um, that's kind of my short summary, but I could go on and on, especially about that side of things and her, her passion and heart for this. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, here's here's how I see Jordan, like from my view, I've been following her now for some time. Uh, you know, as Kristen mentioned, she's the head of the influencer division for, um, you know, Greg Shears in FM Lending, which I think has been doing some really innovative work at, you know, how can we go to the consumer first? How can we go to the next gen consumer? The way they're, you know, all their influencers are leveraging social media. It It is the future, you know, like that is, is the future. And then um, Jordan's taken to the next level. She's she's saying, hey, you know what? I'm doing what I'm doing on social media and helping other influencers, but she's really got a heart for things. So she's, you know, getting on the road. I'll let her describe what she's doing. But to me, she she's an industry change agent. You know, I think that more um, people in the mortgage industry need to get consumer first, leveraging social media. And I think more mortgage professionals need to get out there in communities um, go to schools and 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 drive financial literacy. So welcome, um, Jordan. Why don't why don't we start with just tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll talk about this adventure that you're on. Yeah, well, I appreciate both of you having me on here. Thank you so much for the kind words. Um, yeah, so actually, I uh, we just started on this tour. We actually. Um, my husband and I, and then we also have a little girl, she'll be one, and we have two dogs. We all decided to come up with this crazy idea and do this cross-country road trip to bring financial literacy to the next generation. And I'm so appreciative that you both have let me, you know, come on to First Home IQ and be an ambassador, which has really um, helped with, you know, this trip and, and getting content and different ideas put together so we can really leverage th this trip the best to our ability. And I started um, back in mortgages, let's see, in, or mortgages back in 2019. And I moved from California to Georgia. I knew nobody. And I needed to push really hard to try to get agents to trust me, especially because I knew absolutely nothing about mortgages. So that was going to be quite difficult. And I asked them to help me by just giving me anybody that didn't qualify. So any of their preferred lenders that wouldn't take their clients, they tend to have really not so great credit, or maybe they didn't have a ton of assets. And at the time, um, for the company I worked for, they were really great with helping me uh, and educating me. So I had a better idea as to how to truly help these individuals that it felt like nobody else was willing to help. And from that, I just realized how little there was when it came to just financial literacy 
one, in general, but two, specifically around purchasing a home. And over the last almost five years, that hasn't changed. Um, even though I, I continue to put out content, and thankfully, a lot of my customers will go and they'll watch me for, for a long time, and they'll learn as much as they can and come to me pretty educated. And there's still a ton that they need to learn. But that's a really great platform, and I'm very appreciative that that has happened. There's still so much that needs to be taught, and people unfortunately don't know. So I made it my mission to, uh, you know, take it a step further and really go directly to the consumer. Because as great as social media is, there's still so many people that I haven't been able to get in front of. So the goal with this trip is really to teach not only that next generation, but even the current generation that is trying to purchase and maybe isn't having any luck because their loan officer isn't willing to educate them. And, um, you know, we are touching everyone from high school age and just the basic financial literacy to college um, to the the current first time home buyer trying to purchase. And so it's been um, definitely a whirlwind to try and plan, especially since nobody has done this before. So it's a little um, intimidating to take on something so big um, that you are kind of just making it as you go. But I'm excited for it. And, and we actually left California yesterday and we stayed in uh, Mesa, Arizona, just outside of Phoenix. So I'm excited because this is going to be our first stop for the next few days um, before we continue on through throughout Arizona and Texas and kind of the rest of the states throughout the South. Well, one of one of my my I, mean, I have a, a couple hopes. I mean, one of my hopes is that, uh, you know, the first home IQ quiz is, you know, um, thousands of, of Gen Z and, and mortgage professionals and teaching professionals, you know, they, they become aware of that. Uh, you know, you, you are a mortgage coach. So I also hope that, you know, as you travel the country, you, you have the opportunity to collaborate with other mortgage and real estate professionals. So for any mortgage coach listening to this, um, you know, follow this story. Um, what, what is, you know, the best place? Like if someone is listening to this and they're like, Hey, I want to, want to know what city you're in. I want to be able to follow you. Um, you know, where, where can they, you know, stay in tune with what's happening in all the, the cities you're going to? Sure. So we have the website, it's called mobile mortgage mom.com. Um, and so all of my current social media, I, I try to link to there because it's it doesn't have a following yet it, since we just started it. Um, but that's going to be a lot of the behind the scenes, the interviews, the day to day vlogging. Um, where are we going next? Where are we currently? So um, mobile mortgage mom, there's the dot com, all of the social medias, they all match that as well. So TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Um, so if you kind of want to follow that journey and see where I'll be along the way, that would be the best. Those places would be the best um, to look into. And, and, and yeah, I, that's, by the way, that's I just saw this. Cool. I just I just googled you, and um, <laughs> and guys, check it out. Just to you know, bring a little visualization to what Jordan is doing. Cool article by the National Mortgage News. You know, um, do you want? people in the industry follow you on Instagram? I mean, is that cool? If Yeah, of course. Yeah. Another home loan is where uh, that's where I started my, my bread and butter and where a majority of my followers sit. And I've been very fortunate to grow quite a, a large um, group of people and um, which has been really nice. And that's kind of helped me push into this and be able to really capitalize on on helping more people. Um, so another home loans where all my financial literacy will fit and sit and everyone's welcome to follow along. I have loan officers all the time reach out, hey, can you answer this question? I just don't really know how to get started on social media or I don't know how to really help people. And I know what I wanna say, but I don't really know how to say it. Um, so yeah, I have, I have people from all, all over the industry that, that reach out and, and follow, which is really nice. Cool. So we're going to put a link below one to that article and two to, you know, the links to follow Jordan and mortgage coaches and, and um, ambassadors, you know, reach out to Jordan, collaborate, you know, she's coming into a local market, help, um, help her and you 
get in front of um, educators and get in front of as many local people as possible. Kristen, um, any comments, questions, directions to take the, the podcast here? You're on mute, oh, by the way. you're muted. Sorry, there was a helicopter, I forgot. Okay, um, so I was thinking about how most people cannot take a tour across the country and you know follow your lead in that way, but they can do this in their local areas. You know, they can take it honestly like a, a tour basically of their local community colleges and um and you know get in front of realtor groups and first time home buyers and that type of thing. And I think it's really important to see how you have been so active on social media and been very successful there and you're going in person. And I, I think that, you know, combination is really important. So I just wanted to ask you why you, you know, why you decided that was important to pair with the digital strategy that you had, like what, why was getting in front of people, you know, going to be part of that? Yeah. So when I started in the industry in Georgia, I made it a point to go to open houses every weekend and to be a part of the Boys and Girls Club and to be part of the local chamber of commerce. And so the goal was to be in front of people and to help with the community and be a part of the community because that's where I lived. And I think it's very important to immerse yourself in you know, the people around you, because as a mortgage professional, I feel like most think, oh, I have to go directly, especially if you're newer, I have to go directly to the real estate agent. And that's not necessarily the case. You know, there's different teacher, you know, the unions, firefighters, teachers, first responders. Um, there's so many different people in your community that when you you know, dive into it and really become a part of your community and help and and they can see that you're giving and willing to step in when needed, and you really do care about the community, then they are going to say, hey, you know, Jordan, Jordan comes and um, educates and volunteers or does this and, and helps out the, the school. And I, I'm pretty sure she's a lender. You may want to reach out to her. And that's great because you have the community really fighting for you and, and being you know, that marketing tool that you didn't even think of. And, you know, that's really great to be able to do that when you are in your current community. And when I started on social media, I still did that, but I was able to put a little bit more into essentially other communities online, which was really nice, but I didn't get the same return. You know, I love people all the time will be like, Jordan, you're, thank you so much. That was so amazing. And I love that. And it, it feels good to be able to help people, but it's a different feeling when you get to do it face to face and come in and say, hey, this is my mission, this is my goal, and you get to like shake hands and really see the impact that you have on a, a group of people, a community, whatever the case is. So I really do miss the ability to help more in person. And so by doing this tour, I, I really get to kind of tap back into that, which is really nice. The perfect pitch for the purpose and profits combination. You know, I mean, there's so many reasons there that you explained why that's important. So great. Hey, you know, you you used the word impact. I actually lost count of it. You know, it was it was a lot of times. And just watching your career, you know, how you you not only create value on social media, but you know, you've become a leader within that, you know, creative um you guys call it the creative clap cl or um, collective. Yep. The creative collective. Like mm -hmm. you're, you're just, you create impact. Like you're, you're an impact in, um, you know, my, my two words this year, the thing that I'm super passionate about is, is obsessed with impact. In fact, I'm doing a lot of keynotes called obsessed with impact. And when I picked that as my two words for the year, you know, the more I thought about it, the more I realized, you know what? those aren't my two words for the year. Like those are the two words of my career, you know, like obsessed with impact. And then the more I thought about it, I'm like, you know what? All the most successful people I've interviewed are obsessed with impact. All the people I like hanging out with, like Kristen Messerly <laughs> are obsessed with impact. And then it, it also just really occurred to me hearing you talk, you're, you're obsessed with impact. So I want to hear where, where did that start? Like, you know, we, we, cause there's a lot of loan officers right now that are just loan officers. You know, it's transactional. They're not 
obsessed with impact. And so I'd really like to hear your obsessed with impact kind of story in it because it might help other mortgage professionals kind of fall in love with impact again. So what, where did it all start for you? Yeah. So for me, I always knew, you know, I've kind of dabbled in different industries prior to getting into mortgage. And I've always known that I wanted to, hey, you know, how can I help somebody? How can I help in any way? And my mom wanted me to be a lawyer. And I was like, ah, that's not really my thing. You know, I would love to, but I don't know if I can go that much in school. Same with being a doctor. I always want to be a doctor. And I was like, I can't do that much school. It just feels like a lot. And um, I randomly came, you know, a friend of a friend was in mortgage and somehow I was like, let me just, let me just, I don't know, why not? Let's go into it. And I realized very quickly that this was perfect for me because I, I knew that I wanted to help people. I just didn't know how specifically I wanted to do it. And as I got into it and I, like I had mentioned to Kristen earlier, you know, there's, it's, it's so disheartening that we live in America and it's the American dream to own a home. And it feels almost out of reach to most most Americans. And it's, you know, if you take out of the equation, the cost of the home and the debt and all of that, you take that out and you focus truly on the education piece. Education in any industry will get you very far in life. And so I've, I've talked to so many people that started with the nothing. They knew absolutely nothing about how to purchase. They thought you needed 20% in the 700 credit score. And I've gotten them into a home where they were first generation home buyers and they didn't even tell their family until it closed because they were so nervous. And that does something to, if you truly sit back and you look at it as this is a person, this is not a transaction. It completely changes how you do business because yes, we are in sales and yes, you can go find people and, and sell them a mortgage and the rate and the, the program and all of that. You can do all of that as a loan officer. That's what we're meant to do. But truly as a human being who cares, you have to look at it as this person truly wants to do better in life. They want to provide a roof over their family. They're a single mom that just got through a divorce. Whatever the case is, they are really trying to do better in life. And they are relying as you on you as the professional, as the guru, as you know, the one who's going to be there and fight for them to help them on the right path to home ownership. And that one is a huge on taking, but it's also really rewarding to know that I'm the person that they feel that they trust enough to take on such a huge part of their life. Because in most cases, buying a home is going to be the biggest purchase of, of most people's lives. And we do it very few times in most cases as well. So that, that really, when you when I took a step back and really looked at the full picture, that's what told me every time this is like doing a loan for my best friend or my mom or my cousin, you know, it's, I look at each transaction as I'm trying to do better for that particular family as if it were, were my own. Love it. I think Kristen. it's really interesting. Yeah, I think it's really interesting that you're hearing from so many different consumers. And I would love to, because like you're you're not just putting out content, you're in front of people, you're hearing from the next generation in particular. Um, and I'd love to hear from you. What are some of the the biggest questions or challenges that you're you hear from people as they reach out to you or the, the you know, some of their hesitations? Credit. Credit mm -hmm. and money needed. So most people, and I've made many, many videos about, um, you know, don't pay off installment debt. So most people don't know the difference between installment debt and revolving debt and why you shouldn't necessarily pay off installment debt right before 
you close or right before you talk to a lender and let them advise you and properly show you how to do that and when to do it. Um, so credit tends to be the biggest, one of the probably top two. And then the other one is just the money needed. So whether it's it can be anywhere from, oh, I, I didn't know I needed closing costs. I just thought it was a down payment to the complete opposite end where it's like, oh, I thought you needed 20% down. I didn't realize you can get into a home with zero or three or three and a half percent down. Um, so with just finances in general across the board, when it comes to what is needed for a transaction as a whole, those are the two biggest ones that I see the most questions and concerns on across the board. Well, definitely, so, uh, sorry, research, sorry, go ahead, Dave. No, you go ahead, Kristen. Oh, I was just gonna mention, we just released the next gen, the 2024 next gen home buyer report. And, um, you know, we have some data over, you know, the last few years about how people are like 70% of people don't know that you need, you could have less than 10% down. Um, and there's just so many people that have a lot of questions around financial literacy, but one of the things you had brought up was access. And, uh, we had, we found this year last month that over half of next gen said that they didn't think homeownership was going to be within reach for the next generation. So I think that's a huge, like alarm bell for us to, to be doing things like you're doing where you're putting out education to say, Hey, this is possible, you know, um, through this kind of education. Yeah, I think yeah. it's important because there's just, you know, you see the news, so many articles, it's like home buying is now out of reach or it may be out of reach for the next generation or home prices have gone up or rates have gone up. And there's a lot of negativity around purchasing a home or this corporation bought this, you know, entire community and now they're going to be renting it out. And if you find a loan officer who truly cares and will take the time to explain to you, or you watch people on social media that truly care um, and want to educate you and make sure that you sit in a better position when it comes to purchasing a home, then I think that puts you very far along the way because there, there are, there's so many programs that are available. And I understand, you know, there's different parts of the U.S. Some are more expensive than others. You know, California is much more expensive than, let's say, Indiana. Um, but it, that doesn't mean that it's not possible. It just means that we have to be a bit more strategic depending on where you purchase. And I think um, a lot of people just get frustrated and kind of, you know, throw in the tile, towel per se to home buying because they see all of these negative articles and hear all of these things and so-and-so said this and I just don't think it's possible and you know before you just kind of quit on yourself I think it's very much worth speaking to a professional that does truly care so that they can let you know hey it may not be possible right now but if you do X, Y, and Z, let's re, um, revisit this in six months or nine months. And if you've done these, there's a much better chance that you can qualify. Um, and I know that, you know, as a mortgage professional, if, if you're watching this, that that may sound like, oh, Jordan, but, you know, that's my time. And I could be working with a client that's ready now. And, and I 100% understand that. 100% get that. But I do truly believe that the people that are the most success successful in this world are the ones that give and contribute to society and don't necessarily expect a return or like a, an immediate return because it will come, you know, it's, it's almost like karma, you know, what you put out into the world, you're going to get back. And I, I do truly believe if you put good out there, and you tr try to help as many people, whether they come back to you or somebody else comes back to you, it will be returned in some way, shape, or form. No, no doubt about it. Well, you know, um, Krista, think of another closing question, but I, I want to ask a couple of questions just to try to make this, you know, as actionable as possible for anyone listening to this interview. Um, you know, and I, I truly believe, you know, First Home IQ 
is not only, you know, going to make a massive difference in America in terms of um, financial literacy in America, but I really think it's kind of like the hottest and newest way to win with realtors. And, and I really do believe, you know, partnering with real estate agents in local communities to, to you know, they're not, people don't have to go and travel to 50 cities like you're doing, although I, I do think it would be cool to see if you can inspire more professionals to do that, you know, uh, yeah. I think that would be, but, but let's, let's kind of close out with, if there was a, a loan officer listening to this and, and they could get some inspiration from you and may, maybe even some scripting, you know, like if, if you were to call a school, you know, what, what do you say? How do you, how are you approaching local community, whether it's schools or organizations to, to let you come and do some financial literacy awareness and training? Because I, I would just love to see more professionals doing that and collaborating with realtors. So and if there's a way to answer it that way too, but what, what does it sound like when you or someone yeah. on your team is doing this? Yeah, so thankfully, Kristen and the team, you've done a wonderful job of putting together a lot of the um, different scripts and pitches that you found have worked really well to communicate over to different, um, whether it's a real estate agent or it's, um, you know, a, a university, a school, anything like that. So that's been really helpful to kind of tap into and get a better grasp as to what resonates with the particular, you know, um, business or community, wh whoever it is that you're trying to reach out to. But at the end of the day, really speaking on financial literacy and how just as a whole in America, we have a, a crisis on financial literacy. And we're really trying to, whether it's, you know, to the school impact the next generation that, you know, are currently there and they are trying to educate on their end. And it's worth really having somebody else come in as well if they're open to it and letting them know, hey, we're not trying to sell you on purchasing a home. That's not what we're trying to do. Just a, a basic financial literacy, because unfortunately, there are so many kids and young adults in the U.S. right now that don't have that backing. You know, they don't grow. They didn't grow up in it. And it is something that if you don't, don't grow up in it, you have to be taught from other sources. And there's a lot of young adults, like I said, that just don't have that at home. And that's not their fault. They just need to be able to find a resource to be able to absorb that information. So I think, you know, showing the this school or whoever it is you're trying to reach out to, hey, this is what's going on right now in the U.S. And we're really trying to help bring those numbers down so that more people have a better understanding on how to be better in the world and don't go into massive amounts of debt. And when it comes to the real estate, real estate side of things, it's, hey, let's team up and educate. Because if we have a, a well-educated buyer, then they will, one, make help make this transaction easier they will understand fully what they're going into and two they will fully trust us as their partners we are their team fighting for them so there's less likely for them to veer off to somebody on one of the big websites they clicked on because they wanted they didn't know it was a button and so on and so forth if we come up together on a team and we show them, hey, this is who we are and we're here to fight for you. Please let us do that on your behalf. And we educate them. One, they will want to stay with us. They'll want to learn more information. But two, they will see so much value in that, that I don't see how they would go anywhere else. And you would then get that client and maybe a client for life. Kristen, what are, you know, any closing thoughts you have? Just that, you know, I think your approach around leading with mission, both with consumers and with realtors, you're going in and saying, hey, I want to share some information that's going to help you grow your business. And I, I think that approach is so important in today's environment. I was just hearing from uh, we started a class with a, a group of high, high school students in Brooklyn yesterday. And some of their main questions were like, 
you know, really skeptical about real estate, really skeptical about buying a home. And everyone is feeling that way. And I think, you know, even real estate agents are feeling really skeptical of loan officers coming in and telling them something because they're trying to sell. So anyway, all that to say, that approach is so important in today's environment, but it also is a longer term play. So what does success look like for you as you're going through this longer term play across the country, you know, like, yeah, what does success look like for you? So it's kind of broken up into a few different areas because I'm expecting to see quite a few different people um, and experience different events and um, organizations. So mainly, so the, the main one is to bring financial literacy to as many people as possible. And ideally have them take, you know, the first home IQ test and have a better idea as to where their knowledge stands. Um, so that that's going to be the biggest, bring that as to as many high schools, colleges, community colleges, um, different unions, non other nonprofits, um, battered women's shelters have reached out, boys and girls clubs, YMCAs, essentially anyone that needs financial literacy. I am 100% willing to go there. If it if it's in line with the, the dates that I can, I will 100% make the drive and fit as many as I possibly can. Um, so it, that's going to be the main one. Outside of that, as well as I would love to partner up with different real estate agents. You know, as a whole, my company works everywhere in the U.S. except for New York. Myself, on a personal level, I carry about seven states. So out of out of the 30, I think, two we're going to go to, I carry seven personally. So there's agents I already work with there um, that I'm hoping, you know, I get to meet in person finally after so many years. There are agents that I've never been able to meet. Um and have never worked with. So I'm really hoping to solidify those relationships a bit more and have them see me as a person and not just, hey, my client found you on TikTok and you're some random lender. I don't know who you are. And they truly see like my mission and my goals when it comes to this. And I am truly a person that cares and not just some random online. Um, and just bring more awareness around the topic and to hopefully inspire other loan officers, real estate agents, anyone in this industry to have a different approach on how they go into a borrower and a transaction. Because the goal is, yes, to close them, but it's to close that person and they feel educated and they understand what happened and they are comfortable with everything that went throughout and they are confident in the next steps of home ownership because once you know once we close on a home there are so many other things that come along with it and i want to make sure when i get a borrower into a property they aren't like okay now i have no idea what to do and did i just make a mistake by doing this i always want them to feel comfortable with this huge decision that they made and i think that's really important so hopefully this will also inspire agents and loan officers to really take a step back and see if their approach to different borrowers in their community is truly of, you know, wanting to help or if it's truly just a transaction kind of mindset, because that those two different mindsets will completely change, you know, the business, both how you receive it and how you continue to grow in it. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I heard, I think you said the, the words, Kristen, leading with your mission. You said, I love the way you lead with your mission. And, you know, we're going to be doing, um, launching the Modern Mortgage Summit next couple of days. And, you know, the modern mortgage professional um, delivers advice with price. You know, they're, they're really helping consumers. The modern mortgage professional is going beyond the transaction and and helping the family make a great long-term decision to achieve their goals. And then, you know, the modern mortgage professional has a mission. You know, they have purpose that's bigger than being a successful loan officer. And 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 Jordan, I think you you epitomize that. You know, I really um I'm inspired by what you and your husband are doing. Um you said we all decided like me and my husband are one year old and two dogs. Did the dogs get a vote? 
Did they? Did they? Um, they the they definitely did not, and I think <laughs> they're 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 adjusting. They're adjusting to it. It's a much well, smaller space than they're used to, but they're they do enjoy though. They get to walk now all the time, whereas before they just like went out and ran in the yard. Now they get to walk, so I do think they're pretty on board though with the this transition. They're getting on board. They're getting on board. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I hope um, other people are inspired by what Jordan's doing. I hope that many of you that are in this mortgage coach community will follow her. We'll put the links down below the website. I don't think it's hot yet, but her, her Instagram is follow her. I mean, you know, what she's doing on social media is not just like busyness on social media. Like she's doing business using social media and now she's going nationwide. I, I'm sure you're going to learn a lot. I'm looking forward to interviewing interviewing you along the way, bringing some stories and success stories back to everybody. So please, you know, well, I know you're going to stay close with Kristen and I because I know First Home IQ yeah. is, you know, one of your your sponsors of your event. Um, mm -hmm. For anyone that wants to learn more about First Home IQ, there'll be a link down below. Check that out as well. Kristen, any closing thoughts before we give Jordan the last words? No, I'm just so excited about what you're doing. And I, you know, again, want to reiterate what we've been talking about that leading with mission, leading with purpose does make an impact both on the the purpose side and the profit side. Um, and I think there are ways that people can replicate what you're doing in their local community. So thank you so much, Jordan, for being a leader in this space and a leader with First Home IQ. i uh, excited to watch and support your journey. And well, closing I for you, Jordan. Yeah, I just appreciate both of you, you know, having me on today, but also the support and throughout this kind of process and, and, you know, for the next handful of months or so, while we take on this, this new journey, but I'm pretty excited about what's going on. And I just really hope that it does help loan officers to, like I said, take a step back and fully uh, review how they do business and realize that leading with purpose is really important um, as opposed to just going into it essentially for the profit of it. Because of course, we all need to pay the bills and, and feed our families and, and whatnot. But I think at the end of the day, if you go into this with fully a purpose and, and a want and need for education and to truly want to help that that will take you so much further in this industry. So thank you yeah. again. Yeah, I know. I agree. I, I just started reading this book, everyone. I, I haven't read it, um, but I, I know I love the title, Purpose and Profits. And the subtitle is How Business Can Lift the World. And I, I truly believe that mortgage and housing professionals can, can really, you know, put a major dent in financial literacy in America. And I truly believe that if, you know, all you know, Gen Z, renters, um, you know, gained greater awareness of, of you know, what homeownership can bring to them and and how ownership, homeownership can be achieved. Like we, we would make America better. So anyways, those were my closing thoughts. Guys, links down below, check it all out. Jordan, I can't wait for the next time we get to talk with you. Take care. Yeah, thank you. Have a good one. All right, take care, everybody.